Our seventh learning objective is dealing with polyprotic acids and looking at the titration curve of these polyprotic acids. The Polyprotic means you have more than one proton that can be donated from this acid. They call that being a liable proton, donatable proton. And so we're looking at a titration curve on the screen right now of a diprotic acid being titrated with a strong base. What we want to be able to do is recognize what species would be present at every point along the titration curve. We'll consider the pHs at those equivalence points, but we will not actually calculate pHs during a polyprotic acid titration. As we look at this titration curve, we have a diprotic acid. And the diprotic acid we're going to be looking at is carbonic acid. And it's going to be reacting with sodium hydroxide. That's what's occurring during this titration curve. So we see that we'll have two, um, two equivalence points. We have one here, we have one here, and we have the pH changing in gradual fashions and then spiking up and then gradual fashions and spiking up during the course of this titration curve. Let's begin by looking at the overall reaction of carbonic acid uh, with sodium hydroxide. This is the overall reaction. You're going to need two sodium hydroxides for every bi um, carbonic acid mole that you have in there. And if we wrote the net ionic equation, we'd still see that 2 to 1 ratio between the OH minus and the H2CO3. But when this reaction takes place, it, the OH doesn't pull off both protons off the carbonic acid at a time. What it does it, it is it occurs in a stepwise fashion. What do I mean by that? Well, the first step will be the removal of the first proton. It'll be the easiest one to pull off of the H2CO3. So we will be removing one of these protons and forming the bicarbonate ion during this first titration curve. So we begin by adding some base. It'll convert some of the acid over to its conjugate base and we will have a range where we'll have a buffer because there will be a both the HCO3, H2CO3 and the HCO3 minus present in solution and we'll see that buffer occur. So it'll be a gradual increase and eventually you will be at the equivalence point. And when you're at your equivalence point you will have converted all of your base and all of your H2CO3 over to the bicarbonate ion. Now this bicarbonate ion is still able to donate a proton so we'd expect the pH to still be in a acid range because it will behave as an acid. So let's look at the curve. We're looking at the area in the side of this blue box and we are once again considering H2CO3 and one of the OH minuses converting over to the bicarbonate ion and water. And this is what's occurring during this first re region. So we see this area of uh, flattening out sort of that's occurring at the buffer. So we have a buffer between the bicarbonate ion and the carbonic acid here. We could use the henderson hasselbalch equation to calculate pHs during that range if we were asked to. But like I said, I won't ask you to calculate pHs of these diprotic acids. We hit the equivalence point and when we're at the equivalence point we see we still have a pH of a in the acid range because this thing can still behave as an acid. So we get to this first equivalence point and then we continue adding OH minus and then at that point it's going to start taking it off on the second, the second hydrogen. So we have the carbonate ion that got converted in the first equivalence point. The OH is continuing to be added and we're going to be forming the carbonate ion as we continue on this reaction. So the pH is going to slowly climb. We're once again in a buffer range where we have both the bicarbonate and the, carbo um, the carbonate ion both present. So let's look at the curve and we're looking at this blue box area. In this blue box area we have the HCO3 minus and the base converting over to the carbonate ion and water. We have this zone here where we have a significant amount of both. After the climb it starts leveling out because we have present in solution, both, and these are conjugates of each other and they're weak. So we have that buffer range. 
We finally reach the point where we've just consumed all of the bicarbonate with the added hydroxide and there's only carbonate present. And when there's only carbonate present, this is definitely a base, so we see a pH in the base range. So at each point along the curve, we see what's happening. If we keep on adding more and more base after we've reached that equivalence point, we now will climb our pH as there is an increased concentration of OH minus. So there's both OH minus and CO3 2 minus in the solution. It's definitely basic and it'll continue to climb. So that's our learning objective number seven in which we're just looking at the titration curve in this case of a diprotic acid, talking about what exists at each point along the way in the graph and what the pH at the equivalence point in general will be.